Chapter 30 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 30 Iracema thought that her bosom would burst. She sought the banks of the river, where grows the coqueiro palm, and clasped the trunk of the tree, till a tiny cry inundated her whole being with joy. The young mother, proud of so much happiness, took the tender one in her arms, and with him cast herself into the limpid waters of the river. Then she gave him the delicate breast, and her eyes devoured him with sorrow and love. Thou art Moacir, the fruit of my anguish. The jandaya, perched at the top of the palm tree, repeated, Moacir, and from that time the friendly bird united in its song the names of both mother and son. The innocent slept. Iracema sighed. The jachi makes honey in the sweet-smelling trunk of the sassafras. During the month of flowers, it flies from branch to branch, collecting the juice to fill the comb. But it does not taste its sweetness reward, because the irara devours in one night the whole swarm. Thy mother also, child of my sorrow, will never taste the joy of seeing the smile on thy lips. The young mother fastened over her shoulders a broad swath of soft cotton, which she had made to carry her child always fastened upon her hip. She then followed over the sands the trail of her spouse, who had been gone three sons. She walked gently, not to awake the little one, that slept like a bird under the maternal wing. When she arrived at the great hill of sand, she saw that the trail of Martin and Pochi continued along the beach, and guessed that they were gone to the war. Her heart sighed, but her eyes sought the face of her babe. She turned her face back towards the Mokoribi. Thou art the hill of gladness, but for Irasema thou bringest nothing but sorrow. Returning, the mother placed the still sleeping child in his father's hammock, widowed and solitary, in the cabin center. She lay down upon the mat where she had slept since the time her husband's arms had ceased opening to receive her. The morning light entered the cabin. Irasema saw the shade of a warrior come in with it. Kaubi was standing in the doorway. The wife of Martin sprang up with one bound to protect her child. Her brother raised his sad eyes from the hammock to her face, and spoke with a still sadder voice. It was not vengeance which drew the warrior Kaubi to the plains of the Tabajaras. He has already forgiven. It was a longing to see Irasema, who took away with her all his gladness. Then welcome be the warrior Kaubi to the cabin of his brother, said the wife, embracing him. The fruit of thy bosom sleeps in this hammock, and the eyes of Kaubi long to behold it. Irasema opened the fringe of feathers and showed the babe's fair face. Kaubi contemplated it for some time, and then laughing, said, He has sucked the soul of my sister. And he kissed in the mother's eyes the image of the child fearing lest his touch might hurt him. The trembling voice of the girl cried, Does Araken still live upon the earth? Hardly. Since my sister left him, his head bent upon his bosom, and it rose up no more. Tell him that Irasema is already dead, that he may be consoled. Kaubi's sister prepared food for the warrior, and slung in the porch the hammock of hospitality, that he might repose after the fatigues of the journey. When the traveller was refreshed, he arose with these words. Say, where is Irasema's husband and Kaubi's brother, that the braves may exchange the embrace of friendship? The sighing lips of the unhappy wife moved like the petals of the cactus flower, stirred by a breeze, and remained speechless. But tears rolled from her eyes in big drops. Kaubi's face clouded. 
Hirasema's brother thought that sadness remained in the plains she had abandoned, because she took with her all the smiles of those who loved her. Hirasema dried her eyes. The husband of Hirasema has left with the warrior Pochi for the shores of the Akarau. Before three suns shall have illuminated the earth, he will return, and with him gladness to the soul of the wife. The warrior Kaubi awaits him, to know what he has done with the smile which lived on Irasema's lips. The voice of the Tabajara grew hoarse, and his restless step walked at random up and down the cabin. End of chapter 30